Landfill gas is produced by the biological decomposition of general solid waste refuse and other organic materials disposed of in the landfill. LFG production typically begins within a year of waste placement and may continue up to 50 years after landfill closure, with peak LFG production for any given disposal cell occurring within the first or second year of waste placement. The total LFG production rate increases as more waste is added to the landfill. Reported LFG production rates vary from 0.0007 to 0.080 cubic meters of LFG per kilogram of waste burial per year. LFG emissions are governed by gas generation mechanisms and gas transport mechanisms. The following content describe these mechanisms and the major factors influencing LFG generation and transport. The three primary causes of LFG generation are volatilization, biological decomposition, and chemical reactions. Volatilization. Volatilization is due to the change of chemical phase equilibrium that exists within the landfill. Organic compounds in the landfill volatilize until the equilibrium vapor concentration is reached. This process is accelerated when biological activity increases the temperature of the waste mass. The rate at which compounds volatilize depends on their physical and chemical properties. Vapor pressure quantifies the tendency of a pure liquid compound to partition to the vapor phase. Liquid molecules that possess sufficient kinetic energy are projected out of the main body of a liquid at its free surface and pass into vapor. The pressure exerted by this vapor is known as the vapor pressure. The vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit is 2.34 kilonewtons per square meter or 0.339 psi. Pressure conversion factors are shown here and can be found in the supporting documents topic of this course. Henry's Law determines the extent of volatilization of a contaminant dissolved in water. Henry's Law states, the amount of any LFG that will dissolve in a given volume of liquid at constant temperature is directly proportional to the pressure that the gas exerts above the liquid. Henry's Law is presented in the formula shown here and in the supporting documents topic. Henry's constant quantifies the tendency for a volatile in landfill leachate to partition to the vapor phase. This constant is temperature dependent, increasing with increasing temperature. Estimates of vapor pressure and Henry's constant for numerous organic compounds are available from various sources. Biological decomposition. Sanitary landfills produce large quantities of LFG, with the major components being methane and carbon dioxide. LFG generation occurs as a result of decomposition, aerobic and anaerobic, and can be divided into three distinct phases. However, it is important to understand that there will be both aerobic and anaerobic degradation occurring at the same time. Aerobic decomposition. During the aerobic decomposition phase, microorganisms slowly degrade the complex organic portions of the waste using the oxygen trapped during the landfilling process to form simpler organic compounds, carbon dioxide, and water. Aerobic decomposition begins shortly after the waste is placed in the landfill and continues until all of the entrained oxygen is depleted from the voids and from within the organic waste. Aerobic bacteria produce an LFG characterized by high temperatures, high carbon dioxide content, 30%, and low methane content, 2 to 5%. Interior landfill temperatures can run between 90 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Aerobic decomposition within the landfill typically lasts for several months. However, due to air exchange between the atmosphere and the landfill, there may always be some aerobic degradation occurring at the edges of the waste. Aerobic degradation generally degrades many of the larger polymers, such as starches, cellulose, 
lignans, proteins, and fats into smaller, more available oligomers, polymer consisting of two to four monomers. These oligomers can then be further degraded into dimers, molecules consisting of two identical simpler molecules, and monomers such as sugars, peptides, amino acids, long-chain fatty acids, glycerol, and eventually organic acids. These less complex products of aerobic degradation are more readily degraded anaerobically than the larger polymers. Anaerobic decomposition Anaerobic decomposition occurs in two distinct phases. When all of the entrained oxygen is depleted from the waste, the waste decomposition changes from aerobic to anaerobic, and two new groups of bacteria emerge which thrive in anaerobic environments. Facultative microbes convert the simple monomers into mixed acid products along with hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Anaerobic bacteria convert the mixed volatile organic acids, aldehydes, and ketones into primarily acetic acid and hydrogen. Examples of mixed volatile organic acids include formic, acetic, propionic, and butyric acid. These organic acids reduce the pH which increases the solubility of some organics and inorganics, increasing the concentration of dissolved solids in the leachate. Methane production can be limited during this stage, since the low pH, 5 to 6, is somewhat toxic to methanogenic, methane-producing bacteria. In the next phase of decomposition, methane-producing bacteria utilize carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and inorganic acids to form methane and other products. During this stage of anaerobic decomposition, the methanogenic bacteria become more prominent. These methanogens degrade the volatile acids, primarily acetic acid, and use hydrogen to generate methane and carbon dioxide. This degradation results in a more neutral pH, 7 to 8, as the organic acids are consumed. A decrease in chemical oxygen demand, COD, and dissolved solids concentration within the leachate also occurs. Phase 3 of the decomposition process is characterized by lower temperatures, high carbon dioxide concentrations, 40% to 48%, and significantly higher methane concentrations, 45% to 57%. Anaerobic decomposition will continue until all of the volatile organic acids are depleted or until oxygen is reintroduced into the waste. The graph shows LFG composition trends versus time for the aerobic and anaerobic decomposition of landfill refuse. Chemical reactions between materials in the waste can release LFG. Most of these potential reactions are buffered by the presence of water. However, unpredictable reactions are possible with so many compounds potentially present. The heat generated from biological processes also tends to accelerate the release rate of compounds produced by chemical reactions.